Hopefully it's worked that time. Yes. Yeah. Good morning. It's 9 a.m. Friday, March 29th, 2024. Good Friday. Welcome to the Good News Live at 9 on Facebook and available later on our YouTube channel. Good morning. Welcome to the comment in the chat. This is a presentation of the Allen Park Presbyterian Church. Good morning, everyone. I'm Suzanne Maxey. I'm an elder at Allen Park Press, and my co-host is Carrie Van. Good morning, Good morning everyone. Yes, and it is Good Friday. All the Christians around the world know that today is a very, very sad day. The day that Christ was crucified. But um, it's also uh, the beginning <laughs> of Easter. It's, Easter is coming. So that, that's a very joyful thing. We know the ending of the story. It's not just uh, Good Friday and then, and then it ends. Easter is coming. So <clears throat> we do have a Good Friday service tonight at 7 p.m. If you'd like to join us um, at our in our sanctuary at 7101 Park in Allen Park. Um, and then on Sunday, on Easter, the good news that he is risen. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Uh, we will have a sunrise service at, I believe it's 7 a.m. Yes, I would. It's. I think the sun rises at 7.16, but it would be good to be there a few minutes early so you can actually see the sunrise. How perfect. And then, of course, we have our 10, 10 a.m. worship service if you can't get up that early. <laughs> so. Or you can come to both. Some people come to both. Yep. I know you have. I, I have. Um, I, it's going to be that cold, though. I don't know if I can handle because the sunrise service is on the North Lawn. But it's going to be 50 degrees that day, Sue. I don't know yeah, what well, it will be. Last year was very cold. This year, I don't think it's going to be that cold. Yeah, well, 50 is even hard on my bones. So <laughs> we'll, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see what happens <laughs> Sunday morning. <clears throat> I know we've we've said it before that our preschool is going to be having an open house and that's coming up this next Thursday. Yes, it's already April. Yeah. So if you if you are looking to uh, enroll a child or a grandchild or you know people that are looking, now's the time to come check out the rooms, the grounds, the play yard and open enrollment starts now. I know that seems Really early, but you would be surprised. All the preschools will fill up. Oh, yes. So that is next Thursday, April 4th, from 6.30 to 7.30. <clears throat> we also have our spring work camp registration for Camp Wakanda. So, yeah. Yep, I just got the, going here. Just got the go-ahead. Uh, yesterday to start the enrollment. So we will start that on next Monday or Tuesday. Last year, we had 45 people sign up. Mm -hmm. It was so fun. It was the best work camp ever. Um, we just got so much accomplished. So watch for that. If you don't see it, just contact me and I'll send you the link. We want to beat that record, even though I don't know how many more people we can fit. Maybe a, <laughs> maybe a couple more, right? Maybe a couple more. So, Sue, it seems like I've lived a lifetime since last week. Um, <laughs> I ended ChristNet and slept for 11 hours and started immediately working on Holy Week. And it's been a whirlwind. Busy, busy. It's been a whirlwind. I just sent out a thank you note to everyone uh, yesterday. I yep, I am going to try to schedule an event towards the end of April. I talked to some of the people who served with me and why let that good feeling just go away for a year? Yeah. Why not get together, Keep it going. have dinner ourselves and do mission projects. The first one we're going to do is we're going to make care packets for our food pantry. And as we go, we will find other things that we can do. Hope to do this at least three or four times a year. So I watch for info on that. I'm going to check the comments too. 
All right, let's pull this over here and take a look. Good morning to everyone who's watching. Ken Woods, Pat from Wade and her four legged friends. Hi, Sue Tucker. Hi, Judy Sutherland. And if you don't comment, I don't know if you're watching, but I know you are. <laughs> so thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, what else do we have in the way of announcements? Because we don't want to wait too long. We have a great guest today. Oh, We're excited. Yeah. Uh, one more thing about ChristNet. <clears throat> if you served with me last week and you got to take a look at their van, they have an old 13-passenger van. Uh, it's very, very hard to fit everyone in that van. It's small. They're looking to purchase um, or lease a bigger van. So there is a fundraiser at Orlando Family Banquet Center in Riverview at the end of April on the 26th. Yep. Um, if anyone wants to talk to me or just do it on your own, um, you could support them by making a gift basket for their raffle. It's an adult only event. If you want to attend, the cost is $50 per person. Um, you could do a whole table of 10. And they have a buffet dinner, a cash bar, raffles, silent auctions, live music, and fellowship, of course. So if you have something you want to donate or you want more information, please let me know and I will give you the information. Hope that works out for them because they really need this van zoo. Uh, we we have a, a a woman named Bridget who has a Parkinson's support group at our church, and she informed Rita that she will be hosting, and this is through Henry Ford, a caregiver support group. If you've ever been a caregiver, I have, for my dad and my mom. It was a very, very stressful time. Uh, this is a free class that meets, and it's on Allen Road. And it meets on the third Tuesday at 5.30 p.m. So if this is something you would be interested in and you can't react quickly to that QR code that Sue threw up, there's an article in the bulletin this week, or just contact me and I'll give you the information. So that would be a great thing to attend if you are currently in that situation. All right, do you want to intro our guest today? Many of you know him as a classy dresser very theme oriented very much in times with the holidays and the happenings can't wait to see his easter outfit who's our guest sue our guest is greeter paul wolf he usually waits at the park avenue door and opens it for you and you can see him in his snazzy outfits so all right let's get him in okay you put him in thank you i'm gonna look at the chat while we're doing this and it says Linda Waffle, and is his wife. So <laughs> right. I'm sure she's helping him with the Zoom. <clears throat> Let's see here if I, I could throw up one of his is snazzy he in, outfits. Is he in the room? I I don't know, Ken. I, I don't see him. Can okay. you hear us, Paul? Can't hear you guys. There we go. They're unmuted. Uh, there he is. There he is. Hi. Good morning. I thought I took the meeting down, Sue. So I had a moment of sheer panic. <laughs> yeah. Can you hear us, Paul? Yes. Can you hear me? Oh, yes, yes we can. Yeah, you had to say something. Yes. Hi. Hi. Loud and clear. You you look like a nice, clean, clear screen. So good yep. morning to you. Yeah. Did they, have a little did have a little bit of a problem. Um, yes, me and Sue have a little bit of a problem every Friday. We yeah, just we pray. Are. We yeah. pray our way through it, Paul. Yeah, yeah. I <clears throat> connected. The, I'm using Linda's computer to connect. Aha. Mine, yeah, had, the name. <laughs> mine, mine wasn't updating. Oh, goodness. As we had that problem with a guest recently, it's there's always something with technology. It's a wonderful thing, but it has its quirks. Yeah. Yep. It's great when it works, but not when it doesn't. <laughs> so right. So we're um a little trivia a fact about you that I shared when I was advertising this is that you were baptized at this church when you were only five years old. That's so right. Probably been a lot of storytelling between that time and right now, right, Paul? Yes, I've been around a long time. Yes. 
Now, it wasn't just you. All of you and your siblings were all baptized at the same time, right? Yes, my uh, brother and sister and I, uh, September 25th, 1949. Oh, wow. Oh, that was a couple of years ago, yeah. yeah. So how did your parents come to the church? Well, as my mother would uh, told the story, it was uh, through my sister who had some playmates that uh, invited her to participate in some things at church. And uh, so we uh, ended up joining because of my sister's playmates. Uh, I think one was Nancy Harris, but she that was her good friend that lived on McLean. Now, wow. are you the baby of the family or the oldest or the middle or? I'm, I'm the baby. You're the baby. Okay. So Barbara Jo would always uh, say that she was the youngest. <laughs> Probably because she looked the youngest. <laughs> oh, that's cute. Love Barbara Jo. Yeah. Love Barbara Jo. So yeah, Barbara, Barbara Jo is with us a long time ago until she passed a couple of years ago, right? Yes. So, um, but your journey was a little bit, a little bit different. You came and went a few times, eh? Well, at least once, yeah. Yeah. Um, but uh, I was thinking, you know, when I was growing up in the church, um, we didn't have Camp Wakanda. Um, yeah. Though we did go to church camps. Um, I recall going over to a Presbyterian church camp over in Greenville, Michigan, which was over by Grand Rapids. And then in high school, we uh, would go to like state park campgrounds. Um, where they had uh, dorms and uh, kitchen facilities and, you know, similar to what Camp Wakanda is now. Um, and we'd, they'd rent those and uh, Camp Wakanda didn't come along until after I had been in the service and uh, wasn't in the church for a while. Yeah, Camp, Camp Wakanda and going to camps, I think, is um, it's a really good way for people to bond and connect. A fellowship oh, yeah. is always um, one of the great side effects of, a turn, uh, of attending a church, right? Exactly. Yes. Once you do something like a work camp or like ChristNet or you do something in a group, I think it kind of bonds you to that group forever. At least that's my experience. Well, that's true. Yeah. Um, Back in the day, um, they had uh, what they called a traveling conference where uh, kids from various churches around the area, uh, Presbyterian churches, would travel by car, um, usually to the southwest area, and do a, kind of a mission trip. Uh, my sister went on one, um, and then my brother went on one when it was time when he got to the age where that he was eligible for that. And I went on one, uh, let's see, I must have been 15 or 16 at the time. And it was a group of maybe 12 kids. And they had like four cars with the, with the sponsors that would, would drive. And that was a challenge driving across country with a caravan van of four cars. Yes. When you didn't have cell phones. Yes. <laughs> yes. That, that even when you had cell phones, when we went to New Mexico on a mission trip, there was no service. Yeah. Thank goodness we had a print. I'm like on my phone up in the air and we did have a printed map. So you're right. It's really hard to stick together in those situations. Yeah. But uh, that was a uh, interesting trip. We uh, went out to a little town in New Mexico. Mexico called uh, Placitas, mm -hmm. E L A C I T A S, and it was not much there at the time. And we worked on the Presbyterian Church there. They were doing some renovation, and we assisted with that. And uh, it was a very good experience. We, um, like I say, we did a lot of uh, visiting. Uh, 
in the area. I got to know some of the people in the area. And now it's like a little suburb of Albuquerque. I Googled it on uh, <laughs> Google Maps. And uh, the, the church is still there. It's a lot bigger than it was, or a lot more buildings than it was. But uh, that was a fun thing to do. Yes, absolutely. I remember every mission trip vividly. Um, Paul, you mentioned that that you came back from the service. Which arm of the service did you serve in? I was in the army. Okay. Yeah. Um, and throughout my uh, youth, we uh, I was pretty active in uh, uh, sang in the boys' choir and sang in the high school choir and and uh, even when I went to college, I was singing in the adult choir. And then when I uh, Got, went into service. Um, I was in the service for a little over four years, almost five, and um, got married during that time. But I was married in the church. I got out of the uh, service. I came back to Allen Park, and uh, uh, I've had I had three kids, uh, and all of them were baptized in the church by Wanzer. And um, then we moved to Trenton and uh, had some friends out there and they we ended up joining the Lutheran Church in Trenton, St. Paul Lutheran Church. And when Wanzer found out, he immediately took me off the rolls. <laughs> <laughs> I baptized you and all your children. What are you doing at the Lutheran Church? Oh. <laughs> yeah, but... Um, then uh, when my mom passed and Linda and I uh, moved in her, the house that she had, uh, <clears throat> I wasn't going to, we weren't going to drive back to Trenton to go to church. And so we gravitated to, out back to Allen Park. Oh, what a blessing. I, I can't yeah. imagine our church without you and Linda. <laughs> no, you, you guys are the best. I can't even imagine it. I look yeah. forward to seeing you at Park Avenue door every Sunday. Right. Yeah. And yeah. Then, so you, you, um, oh, I just lost my train of thought. Your mother was kind of a prominent figure in our church. If, if people don't know, correct. That's correct. She, uh, played the organ, mm -hmm. um, helped with the choirs, even directed, uh, some of the little girls choirs. And, um, uh, but she, she would play the big organ. Yep, so it's no surprise that you sang in choir throughout your youth and in, yeah. into the service as well. Yeah. yeah it was so a good experience. You said you went into the service. Did you go in as an officer, like through ROTC or something, or you yeah. enlisted? Yeah, when I was in, in college, I went through ROTC and um, ended up getting my commission and... Uh, went in as a second lieutenant. I was in the branch of the army called the chemical corps because I got my college degree was in chemistry. Wow. And uh, though I've never really used it much other than to get into the chemical corps. <laughs> so what is, did the chemical corps do? Well, they're the smallest branch in the army. Um, most of it's training, uh, uh, teaching about how to put on a Take, you know, a protective mask in case somebody uses gas on you. Um, that kind of thing. But uh, uh, my first assignment was in, at uh, the Presidio of San Francisco, which was a pretty choice assignment. Yes, yeah, beautiful. <laughs> yeah. I've been there. It's beautiful. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, it's hard we, to feel sorry for you with that going there. Yeah. And... Uh, I was there a little over a year, and uh, then they had a short term uh, in uh, Korea, and uh, was there about eleven months. Then my father passed away, and they I, I left that er, left early there because I was going to be uh, reassigned to Dugway Proving Ground. So they since I had already completed. 11 months of a short term, uh, they just 
let me go to Dugway early. I didn't have to go back to Korea. So I spent a couple of years at uh, Dugway where my oldest daughter was born. So were you so you were married and and your family was with you when you were serving in the army. Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um my wife uh didn't go to Korea with me because it was short uh term thing. Right. And uh, then when we went to Dugway, uh we had the first our firstborn there. Where's Dugway at? It's in Utah. Utah, okay. Out in, the, out in the middle of the desert, <laughs> about 80 miles west of Salt Lake City. And uh, probably wasn't a, a lot of nightlife or things to do there, but uh, well, you have a young family, enough. I guess that keeps you busy enough, yeah. right? That's enough night, right? <laughs> yeah. In fact, I, I had a horse while I was there. Oh, wow. And because they had a, a horse club or whatever, and, you, and a friend of mine that was going on a, he was a, a civilian, he was an education officer. He was going over to Japan, I think for a short overseas duty. And so he sold me his horse. And then when he came back, I was still there. So I sold it back to him. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's wonderful. How exciting. Yeah. So you probably don't know this, but your wife was one of my favorite people in the whole world, Linda, and can you tell us how you met her, what your story is, and how you two got together? Well, that's a long story. Well, uh, we got some time. Yeah. Well, um, she lived right across the street from my good friend from high school, and I was home from college, I think it was the first summer, and I went over to see Gary, and he was sitting on a porch with this young lady, uh, named Melinda and uh, so after Linda went back home and uh, across the street and I asked Gary I says are you interested in her <laughs> he says no 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 guy, co guy code yeah and <laughs> so I said well so you won't mind if I ask her out you know so we that's kind of how we met and so we uh, we dated for uh, two or three years. I took her to her senior prom or junior prom, senior prom. And um, then uh, when she went off to college, she met somebody else and that was the end of me. <laughs> Not forever. Not forever. <laughs> yeah. And, and as it turned out, uh, my uh, job and with the Department of Veterans Affairs after I got out of the service, I uh, did a lot of traveling around Michigan. And when I was first going with Linda, her dad had bought this cottage on Mullow Lake up north. And so I, one day I was up that way and I thought, well, I'll just stop in and see him because I he was always a nice guy and and uh, I found out that she was divorced and my divorce was kind of in the works. So I got a hold of her and uh, we got back together. Aw. See, sometimes true love just takes a couple twists and turns along the way, right? Right. And I, I told her she can't leave me. Uh, she can't dump me again. It's my turn to dump her. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have any plans to do that, though. Right. No, I, I would hope not. You two, you two are a great couple. Great, yeah. great couple. Oh, that's a cute story. No. So you said you worked for uh, Veterans Affairs. Were you still right. in the military then or had were you a civilian? I was a civilian then. Yeah. Um, I spent four years and about four and a half years in the service. And uh, when I moved back, I actually lived right across the street from uh, Ken Lieber's dad, Ken, you know, on Cole Street, and uh, tried my hand at uh, real estate, but because my brother-in-law, Barbara Joe's uh, husband, was in real estate, and uh, 
didn't work out too well. So uh, I ended up taking a test for the government service and um, the VA called me and said, we got a job for you. And I says, okay. Worked there for a little over 25 years. Oh, wow. That's great. That worked out wonderful then. Yep. Linda's watching. Hi, Linda. I love you. <laughs> what college did you go to? Uh, actually, I started out at the University University of Kentucky. Oh, wow. Um, my, my brother, when he started college, he went down to the University of Kentucky and I thought, well, that'd be a good place to go. Well, his first year he joined the Marines. And so he wasn't in school there when right. I got there. But my my one of my mother's cousins lived in Lexington, Kentucky. So I had some family connections there. Um, and so I put a couple of years in at University of Kentucky. And then I moved back home uh, they had some housing issues with at that time. They had no on campus housing for anybody but freshmen. Wow. So we had, yeah. And uh, so you had to find your own housing, either join a fraternity or find a place to rent. And uh, we did that one year or a year, for a year and a half. And then I said, it's just easier to go come back home. So I commuted to Eastern for the rest of my college and then spent some time at uh, Michigan State and uh, in graduate school and got my commission there at Michigan State. All right well that sounds I mean that sounds like a good college trip but I mean how do they expect college students to afford to live in their own housing that's pretty hard to do well and work right? Yeah yeah well, the first place we rented was uh, like an old, a bigger house. It was converted into apartments, and it was not very nice. Yes, yes. Co college, college uh, living can be a little different than what you run into later on in life. Can oh yeah, I've <laughs> been there, done that. Ken Wood said, "A Spartan." <laughs> <laughs> Well, when you were at Eastern, you were a, a Huron, correct? Yes. <laughs> yeah, me too. Once a Huron, always a Huron. They're eagles now. Deanna's yeah. an eagle. <laughs> well, I can't believe it. We are almost out of time. <laughs> I know. This has gone by in a flash. Yes. Uh, well, um, we asked, like we do all of our guests, we asked Paul what his favorite scripture was. And you told us 1 Corinthians 13. Do you have a story behind that, or is it just stand on its own? Well, when I was on that traveling conference, the leader of the traveling conference was a was Reverend McDonald, Ted McDonald. And they would always have a little service at the end of the day and uh, a little homily, and, and he read that uh part of scripture and we got to the, the fourth verse there about you know love is patient and kind and yeah. doesn't insist on its own way and then he asks the question are you patient are you kind do you insist on your own way are you jealous or boastful and just i think about that a lot you know. That's great. That's one of my favorite scriptures, too. Absolutely. Yeah. Before Sue shows the graphic, Norma Bentley said, thank you, Paul, for your wonderful interview this morning and for being our Sunday morning greeter. I look forward to seeing you in your Easter apparel. <laughs> yeah. Someone take a picture for me. Yeah, well, <laughs> I've, I've already got the uh, everything laid out. Okay, it's, it's the same one I wear pretty much every Easter. All right, so he's got that laid very, out, ready to very, go. Get very colorful. Friday, Holy yeah. Saturday, and Easter morning. Yeah, I enjoy being the greeter. It's, I think it's uh, a good ministry. Yeah. It is a ministry yeah. because people who come to new places feel uncomfortable about where to go and what to do, and 
yeah. how they're going to be received and having someone outside that says hello welcome makes all the difference in the world yeah absolutely yeah. absolutely you're our first ambassador that's for sure yes yeah you know, first line of defense <laughs> Like I say, I enjoy doing it. And, and we appreciate you very much. Sometimes and, for every, and for everything else you do as well. Yeah. Sometimes I'm a little more colorful than others. <laughs> <laughs> that's all right, too. Very creative. That's, that's yeah. for sure. <laughs> yeah. Well, Palm Sunday, well, last Sunday, I, I was trying to think of what I was going to do for Palm Sunday. Then I remembered I had a shirt that had palm trees on it. So... <laughs> That's awesome. And the green glasses. <laughs> you looked awesome. Yes. All right. Oh, so wait, one wait, yeah. one question before we go. Judy Sutherland wanted to know how long that Paul's been a greeter. Well, I actually started the greeting before COVID. And uh, I, I wasn't as creative at the time, but uh, uh, then, of course, we pause during COVID and so once we started back to uh, uh, in-person services I decided that I'll just pick up where I left off and go all out keep, so make make greeting. sure when you go to church that you greet Paul by name now that you know who he is in case you did not know who he was so now you can say hello Paul right back yeah well unfortunately I don't know everybody's name but <laughs> so if you if paul doesn't know your name say hey paul i'm carrie and that will yeah. make the greeting even more friendly yeah that paul thank you so much for being our guest today i was really excited about doing this interview and i'm so happy that you were able to join us i yeah. really appreciate it yeah i'm glad it worked out me too thank Miss linda and her computer <laughs> yes yeah. always yeah. thankful when it all works out that's for yeah. sure yeah all right, Sue, do you want to lead us out with your regular spiel? That's so perfect. She could be <laughs> she she needs to be a radio announcer. Oh yeah, right. <laughs> so our scripture is 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 4 through 8. So love is patient, love is kind, love never gives up, never loses faith, is always hopeful, and endures through every circumstance. Love never fails. Perfect. Amen. Amen. Amen to that. And if you would like to learn more about the good news of Jesus Christ, please be sure to join Pastor Tim for devotions live at nine, Monday through Thursday on Facebook. And join us Sundays, especially this Sunday at 10 a.m. for worship or at 7 a.m. for the sunrise service. It's on the North Lawn. And it's also live streamed on Facebook and YouTube. <coughs> Sorry. And if you come at the 10 o'clock, I'll give you a hug if you like. Yeah. I won't be at the door, though. I probably won't be at the door, but I'll find you <laughs> or you can find me. <laughs> and if you'd like to be a guest with us on a certain Friday, just let us know. We hope you'll join us next Friday for the Good News Live at 9, when our guests will be Steve Donahue, a.k.a. the Balloon Guy. And remember, you are a beloved child of God. And God loves you, and so do we. Thank you, Paul, and everybody who's watching. Um, it's inappropriate to say Happy Good Friday, but feel all the Good Friday feelings. We have a worship service tonight at 7, and we'll see you all on Easter. Thank you. Have a great day. Bye, Bye everyone. Bye. Thanks, Paul. <laughs>